How's it going guys? My name's Michael. I play bass in the band Night Riots. And I'm here to show you some of the gear that I use while on this tour that we're on. We're um, doing a full national with the Hunna and the Shelters. It's sponsored by All Nation. It's been a lot of fun so far. So uh, we want to take a look at this pedal board. This is what I'm using. This guy right here is the, the, prime, the prime pedal pusher. And when I want my fuzz on, I use my big muff here. I, I, say, I tell Nick to come over and he pushes. I go, Nick, I need the fuzz, quick, quick. There it is. So that's my fuzz, I use the big muff. What I do is I put some tape on it and then put the line so when it gets messed up during travel, I can quickly adjust it back to where it's at. So that's the big muff, not the most important. But we'll start here, use a, a, a line six um, relay. And this is my wireless. Um, that I plug my guitar into and it feeds the sound into my pedal board. Then I go straight into my tuner. It's just a chromatic tuner, pretty standard Boss TU3. Uh, I got this MXR bass compression. It's missing a couple knobs, that's how you know it's nice and uh, good. <laughs> uh, then I go into my bass octave pedal, made by MXR as well. Only use it a couple times, just to kind of fill out the low end. We already talked about this guy. I use this really, really, really nice vintage Boss uh, bass delay. It's a pretty old sound. No one, everyone makes fun of me for it, but I love it. Turn that guy on. I got the standard earning ball volume pedal. Do some swells, some dopeness here. And then I got the uh, Tech 21 um, VT Bass Deluxe Sans Amp pedal. It's a, a DI and an amp modeler for situations where I don't play my bass amp. And uh, yeah, it just kind of saves the day every once in a while. The one pedal that defines my tone, it's got to be the boss. I mean, the, the bass delay is where it's at. Everyone rips on it, but it's dope. This is my amp. It's a SVT4 Pro. Um, it's pretty heavy. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a pretty, pretty great head. It's rack mouse, so it's easy to carry. Then I use a Mesa Boogie 410 um, road ready. Um, What's it called? It's like a road ready deep or something like that. It's cool, you can put the faceplate on, then you don't have to use a road case. It's already built into the road case. You could drop it down a flight of stairs and it's still gonna play music for you. It's pretty cool. Right. This is my bass guitar. Uh, this is the, the other side of the wireless. This sends the signal to my pedal board. But this is a American standard Fender P bass. Um, custom pick guard. Pretty dope. Um, yeah, I bought this thing a couple of years ago. I love the P bass sound. If anyone wants to send me a Fender sponsor, now's the nice time. Uh, I use the. Uh, I just started using a like a semi flat wound string uh, made by Ernie Ball. Uh, I think it's called. Uh, I don't remember the the specific name. I just started using them, uh, and they sound pretty cool. I like them because they they're not round wound strings. They kind of give you a little bit more. Like a, a thumpy sound, but they're, since they're semi flat, they also have the, uh, the girth and grit of a, a round one string. It's pretty cool. I like them because they're smooth. That's why I keep going back and forth. It feels like you're playing glass. Like it's pretty dope. It's like you're playing a, a Coke bottle. Uh, when we play, we usually play in a half a step down, so it'd be an E flat, and uh, no, nothing else. No, no weird like drop D's or anything like that. Just Standard, half a step down. This is the uh, Sub 37 made by Moog. Uh, it is a monophonic synthesizer, but what's special about this one, for any of you guys who know about synthesis, this has a, a duophonic mode. Oh, excuse me, right here. You can turn it on and it, it shares like signals so you can play two notes at the same time. Typically, you would only be able to play one note at one time since it's monophonic, uh, but this thing is a beast. It makes all kinds of sounds. Um, it's it's pretty much the, in my opinion, the best monophonic synth you can get right now in, in the modern world. That is, there's a lot of great synthesizers out there um, from the, the last couple decades, but this is the most current and um, fun synthesizer. I really like this guy a lot. We wrote most of our album Love Bloom, all the low end and sub sounds, on this guy right here. What really um, convinced us to get this guy. Uh, was during the writing process. A lot of times, uh, you get to a you get to a studio and the producer will have a whole bunch of gear set up, ready to go. Um, and this time, when we got to the studio, they didn't really have anything that we 
we really liked the sound for, so we decided that we should look around and see if we could find something extra special. So I did a whole bunch of research, um, talked with the producer, talked to the guys, tried to find something that really fit the Night Riot sound, and we, we came to uh, the conclusion that this is the one, this is, this is the way to go. Before we bought this guy, I wasn't playing any synthesis, I was only playing bass guitar, uh, and it, it's been a lot of fun uh, playing something new and learning a new instrument and adding a new element into our, our music. And I think the most special part about this is that We've kind of moved away from, um, we've kind of moved away from really, really heavy tracks. And any time that I can get over here and play this, we'll play this over. Just you know, sending the house a bunch of tracks, and that's what's really special to me is that we're, we're kind of taking the computer element away from it and making a, a more human uh, aspect to the band. And that's, that's really special. What up, Nikki Knight? Right's here. Going to show you some of the gear we've been using lately. So let's check out the pedal board. All right, basic setup. Got the most important piece of any gear, any setup is the tuner, obviously. If you're not in tune, it's gonna sound horrible. Uh, then I run a few different overdrives. I got this Timmy pedal, which is a weird kind of just like faint overdrive that just basically boosts the amp. I have Ibanez Tube Screamer, and then I run a Fuzz for some like heavier stuff. It's a Faro Black Arts um, Fuzz pedal. And then other than that, just basic reverb. TC Electronic Hall of Fame reverb, I think. I have this analog delay, and then an octave pedal, which just kind of gives you some low end, or whatever you want. This thing's super cool. It can like make synthy sounds, or you can do like organ sounding pad stuff, so it's like cool for interludes and like doing weird stuff like that. We use wireless, so I have my, mine down here on the pedal, and then just a volume pedal. So like basically, super stripped. I don't like using a ton of stuff live although I do love pedals, but um, just having like some overdrive, some delay and stuff, that's what I like. Yeah, I would say the most important pedal to me is probably that Timmy overdrive, just because basically that just boosts. It's like a real um, transparent overdrive, so basically just boosts your amp. And that's kind of like, I try to go for a more simple tone, so I like having just that real kind of crunchy, basic, natural amp sound, and that's what I like. So, for, uh, for amps, I play this uh, Fender Super Reverb, it's a 65 reissue of a black face. Um, on this album, on Love Goom, or Love Gloom, Goom, our most recent album for guitars, I was trying to go for like a more, um, kind of like clean spaghetti western, I say, tone. I compared it to like U2, Bloody Sunday, that if you hear the guitar in that, and maybe like a Depeche Mode. It's kind of a clean but crunchy and like smoky kind of sounding guitar. It's a real Fender-y sounding thing, kind of jangly at times. So that's why I like to run through the Super Reverb and I've been playing a Fender Jazzmaster as well, single coil pickups. And that kind of gives me some of that clean but smoky sound that I like for this album. I've had this for like maybe a year. Um, before the Jazzmaster, I like playing, um, I have a Gibson Les Paul that I also use. I like to have a bit of variety. That's why this is single coil pickups. The Les Paul has humbuckers. I have a Matchless and a Bogner amp that I use sometimes as well. That gives like a kind of heavier, more martially tone as opposed to the opposite Fender tones. So I like just having like across the board spectrum to be able to do whatever you need for this scenario. But lately I've been liking this setup because this is the sound we kind of did for the album we're going for and it's been really nice. I like it a lot. Strings, right now we're all rocking Ernie Balls. I think. Matt and I both use the power slinkies, which are 11 to 48s, I think. Um, we play a half step down, so having a little bit heavier gauge kind of helps things out to stay in tune better, so that's why I like the power slinky. I like a little heavier gauge anyways. So that's basically what all we use for strings right now. I don't ever really change up tuning. We do like one song and, and we drop D, which would be like, I guess, C sharp or something because we're uh, dropped down. But yeah, I've liked the power slinkies for a long time. Thanks for checking out our gear today. We want to make sure you check out our latest album, Love Gloom, that came out in October. Go to our website, nightrides.com, and on our socials, everything Night Rides. Before you go, I want to show you the most important piece of gear that you might have missed that I use every day. It's called the Nintendo DS. I can't play a show without this, so make sure you pick one of these up and challenge me at a show. See you next time.